man, sitcom apartments. First of all, why are they so big? Did they not realize that we all live in closets now? Hi, my name is Kate Wagner. I am an architecture writer and cultural critic. And today we're going to watch some movies with buildings in them. <laughs> the houses are actually just like made out of ticky tacky. Like they look like they could just like be blown over with a stiff wind. The architecture of the houses is just like purposefully generic. Like there's not even any shutters on the windows. And because they're all painted a single color, they look unreal. <laughs> It's the classic tale of the dangers of modernity. Scary, scary modernity. Basically kind of a mix of what we would call Art Deco and German Expressionism, which is these interesting uh, organic forms, but also like modern and like pared down. One thing that I think that they captured as being like really accurate about the future is that there's lots of traffic. We don't have like trains coming at 32 stories up in the air. We don't have personal airplanes yet, but we do have lots of traffic. And so they were right about that. The use of architecture in that movie is pretty incredible and it goes sort of along with this, you know, what they now call like cyberpunk or like vaporwave aesthetic. The scale of the city is used to invoke both like excitement and fear. It's like the, the terrifying vastness of everything is just all consuming. And I think that that is used very much in the same effect in Metropolis. Minas Tirith. That's like, yeah, that doesn't exist. I mean, people have always carved cities into hillsides as long as there have been people, but I'm pretty sure I would know about like a city that was just a big mountain with a circular wall around it. All right, they get water, orange juice, and what looks like cider. That apartment is, first of all, like quintessential, like 90s, 80s, 90s, like aesthetic. The purple walls are incredible. They tried to make them look like they were just like two broke girls or whatever living in New York City, and it's like, uh, this is posh. And of course, that big, huge window that's just like loft-like. That window's a lie. Where is that on the outside of the building? They show the outside of the building, and that window is not there. What the hell are they doing in my kitchen? <laughs> oh, it's so good. What the hell are you doing in my refrigerator? If you forgot your lunchbox, pal, why don't you just ask? The Sopranos house is iconic. The cabinets in the kitchen are those sort of like maple, but whitewash and the laminate countertop that is just like really huge and U-shaped. It's a totally weird, like open but closed kitchen. It just, it matches the people who live there who are just frankly terrible people. The Pearl is the tallest, most advanced building in the world. You've built a vertical city, but you've brought with it every single safety and security challenge that I could think of. Definitely think that the architecture is very much what's going on in a lot of like big name architecture right now. It very much is Zaha Hadid like with the organic forms and like the weird curviness of it. This is like post deconstructivist architecture where we just like keep using these like very dramatic and very difficult to build forms for the purpose of defying belief or creating these things that look like more than buildings almost. So much of architecture now has been CGI'd. And I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know if that makes me old school, but I think that architecture and film work together in ways that are just like really special. The buildings in Star Wars, for example, or Blade Runner or Metropolis, even though you know that they're props, there's something really real about them because they're made out of like actual materials. And I think that lends itself well to architecture and film.